Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble and I am excited to be here with Stacey Bedford from Banzoogle. This is actually her second time being on the podcast. I believe the last time was 2021, maybe. It was one of our earlier episodes of The Profitable Musician that I had her on and we were talking about during the pandemic you know, how much Banzoogle had helped musicians and increased sales and all that. And now they have hit a major milestone. So before we jump into that, because I want Stacey to be able to like announce that and brag a little bit on her company on what their milestone is. If people haven't listened to the previous episode, Stacey, I'd love for you to just catch them up a little bit on you and your experience with Banzoogle. And I know you're also a musician, which is something that Banzoogle is so good at bringing in musicians to their team. So just give people the, you know, the quick once over of what you're about and where you've been and where you are now. And then we'll jump into all the news with Banzoogle. Great. Well, thank you for having me back on the podcast, Bree. It's really nice to speak with you. You're you're an important partner of Ben Zuckel. And um I wanted to uh I wanted to say that um uh if you haven't met me before, my name is Stacy and I'm the CEO at Ben Zuckel. I've been here for, uh, I'm starting my 17th year working with Ben Zugel. That's been a long time. That's a bit of a, it's aging me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm an avid guitar player. I'm a beekeeper. I'm a terrible karaoke singer, but I love to do it on a, <laughs> on a professional level. Ben Zugel has been around for about, we're cel- we just celebrated our 19th birthday. We're, uh, if you don't know what we do, we're an all-in-one platform for artists online. We provide uh, things such as commission-free uh, e-commerce tools, a store for physical products, digital downloads. We provide fan engagement tools such as mailing lists, call to actions. We integrate all of your social media tools, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, Bands in Town, Twitch, Crowdcast, and more. We create beautiful websites to pull all of your content together. They're responsive. They adapt to different screen sizes like mobile, desktop, and tablets beautifully. They're fully customizable and they're really easy to use. You don't need to know any coding or design to to be able to create a fully functional, responsive website with Banzoogle. Awesome. Well, I got to throw this in here because I've been a partner of Banzoogle for potentially almost 10 years and we've had this promo code and I've helped so many people get online or switch from things that didn't work for them like WordPress or Wix or anything that just is not built for musicians. So if you're listening to this, if you're watching this and you want to try out Banzoogle, you can have a free uh, 30 day trial, 15% off your first year if you use WOS 15. So I've had that for so long because it started out with women of substance and then, you know, the, my other podcast and now this one. So still using the same promo code, but you know, if what Stacy just described gets you excited. Definitely go and try out that your 30 day trial in the promo code. So let's, I want to let you tell them, um, I got a press release from you recently and I was like, oh my gosh, this is major news. I need to get them back on the podcast. So let them know Stacy, like what you guys just announced in your press release. I think it's really a milestone for for the company and for musicians. It's huge because Benzoogle supports independent artists. And this milestone really shows that artists are, are making it on their own. Um, so the milestone that we just hit was that Benzigal members have sold $100 million in music and merch through their Benzigal websites. And uh, this is a huge milestone for us and our members, especially since we've been faced with this looming economic downturn, like everything you hear is so negative, touring and everything shut down for a couple of years. So during this time, Benzigal members just, our sales explode, our, our customer sales explode. So it was something that we were really proud of. 
Yeah. And you should be. And, you know, you guys really adapted and created a lot of things to help musicians during the pandemic, because of course, a lot of them were selling a lot of merch in person. And then suddenly that wasn't happening. So, you know, the fact that you made that possible for people, I'm sure that's helped increase the sales, just giving them more ideas and ways to sell things. But I also saw, because I was talking to, um, you know, another um, member of the Bandugal team, and I was asking kind of like, you know, how much of this growth happened in the last few years, basically since the pandemic? Yes. So the exciting part about that $100 million in sales is that more than half of those sales happened in the last five years alone. So like you might think like Bendigal is an old company. This is a long time to accumulate those kind of sales, but really our member, our user site sales exploded in the last five years. So that's about just under $53 million in sales have just happened in the last five years. Uh, and because our customer base is about 60,000 active users, that's like a really big amount of sales relative to the size of our customer base. Yeah, it is. And I was also asking Dave, I was like, well, you know, how much did you guys grow? Like how many new customers did you get in those last five years? And he's like, oh, it's nothing in comparison to the amount of how the sales grew, you know? So it's not like you can contribute it to, oh, we got, you know, 60,000 new customers in the past five years. Yeah, it's interesting because I often say to know Benzugal is to love us because once members sign up, they don't really leave. Mm. Uh, our average member tenure, I think, is right now it's 48 months and that number is always growing. We don't have a very high amount of churn. And Benzugal is like, we're such a like, small organization, like, but we have a, this global presence and we're going up against these huge uh, website providers and e-commerce platforms such as like Wix and Squarespace and Shopify. And it's just in incredible that like anytime we start to accumulate any kind of members, they don't, they don't really leave us. So that's something that we're also really proud of. Yeah, absolutely. Because there are so many other options. Um, and what I also noticed that you guys are really getting into the area of competing with a lot of other digital marketing options, like, you know, funnel building and things, um, you know, you've added landing pages over the past year, was it? And you've also added upsells. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's something that I think, you know, the average musician maybe doesn't know how to utilize or the musician that was like excited to utilize those things had to go outside of the music industry to put those things in place. Yeah. And the whole reason why we're building out these tools is because the goal of Benzugal has always been to like an all-in-one platform with a comprehensive online presence. And a lot of external services that provide these tools are not doing them with the artist focus. And they're also not doing it in a way that all of their uh, marketing initiatives are integrated. So at Benzugal, if you're creating landing pages for different projects, if you're creating online press kits, those are all matched and branded cohesively with your website with very little effort and they're all on the same domain so you don't have these weird random sequence of letters that you're you're linking to and sharing and you know like everything is uh, everything is branded the same all com like it's all it's all branded cohesively across all of your different marketing your different marketing initiatives and the other thing is that Benzigal has always provided these um, mailing list options so it was only natural that we would provide these options where artists could control their whole funnel so whether you're trying to make uh, an album sale or a single sale or a show or a new merch product a more successful offering all of those tools can be every everything that you can do is all in one place at Benzigal. yeah I love that you're right right? It doesn't, it's not like some, like you said, some weird URL where people are like, oh, <laughs> is this the actual business I'm trying to reach? You know? Yeah. And it's recognition too. It's something that you could remember. And then when the artist remembers your domain, they can keep coming back for more. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, let's talk about landing pages because I've known about landing pages for a long time, but there may be some other people listening or watching that don't know like the power of landing pages. What is the reason a musician would use a landing page? Yeah, so landing pages are really important because they allow you to create a single place with a dedicated call to action or um, like some sort of action that you would like your visitor to to take. So for example, um, it allows you to tie in all of those extra marketing, marketing initiatives. So let's say you are promoting on your socials, you have a TikTok reel or Instagram post or a 
even a blog post about a specific initiative, like a single that you have or a pre-order, and you would like to be able to send all of those visitors to a single place to take that action, like pre-order our new album or, you know, buy this new merch item or purchase our live streaming tickets. So all of those initiatives can be driven to a single page with a single action. And then from there, artists are able to like look through all of the data on the interactions with that page and make more informed decisions. And also it'll help you decide things like, was this an effective was this an effective product that we're offering? Was uh, Were the marketing initiatives effective? Where should we put in more efforts next time? Did we get more visitors from, I don't know, Google ads or Facebook or, you know, or Instagram? And uh, it just allows you to compile all the data for a single page in a single initiative with a single marketing effort. Yeah. I mean, if you're putting something like that on your homepage, then you don't know why are they going there? Well, maybe they just Googled me and they found me or, you know, maybe they were at a show and they looked me up. Like, you know, you don't know that they were going there for that particular thing, which totally makes sense for why you would use a landing page. Do you have the analytics built in, like you said, so you could see like the traffic sources and what was the most effective? Yeah, so this year uh, we added um, single page analytics that's mm. tied into our in-house metric. So if you have like a conversion point, like you wanted to make a sale, you wanted to get a mailing list sign up, you wanted to, um, you know, there's there's a bunch of different actions that you might be interested in making on that page. We will compile the number of visitors to the number of successful executions on that page. We also integrate Google Analytics, so it's quite mm. powerful. And we uh, all the all of these reports reporting, the page level reporting and the full site reporting is integrated right into your control panel. Even me, like I, I run a company and when I log into, when I get log, log into Google Analytics, it can be quite overwhelming. So we pull all of the data points that are relevant to artists and the initiatives that they're taking. Mm, that's very cool. Yeah. There's a lot of sites don't have anything like that. So if you're going to take the trouble to create a landing page for a specific thing, you want to be able to know if it's actually working. So Kudos that you guys have all that analytics built in. So you added upsells, which is really cool. What What's an example of some things that artists are using as an upsell? Well, upsells are interesting because we came about this feature because of a change that SoundScan made because Benzoogle offers scan, SoundScan reporting and Benzoogle has like in the last few years, we added this bundling option so you could bundle different products. But um, SoundScan has, uh, they, they don't like to include bundles in their reporting because they found that a lot of people were gaming the system. They would add mm. like <laughs> they would attach a bundle of like a, a digital sale or a physical sale to like a t-shirt or something that was very popular. Yeah. So upselling allows you to associate different products um, and still count towards those sound scan reports. So if you're selling like an album or a single, you could also relate it to different products that you have, like a show ticket, like a, a t-shirt of that, that represents that uh, album. It's pretty interesting because me, like as a consumer, even when I'm even when I'm shopping, what always gets my attention is all of the fun stuff by the cash register. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, like upselling is just suggesting to the people who are already intending to purchase something on your site that there's these other things that they might be interested in. And that always gets me because I, I usually, it usually encourages me to make extra purchases. And we found that um, it was helping to increase the overall sales numbers for average users. Mm, makes sense. So, I mean, in general, then are people like, I'm going to buy a t-shirt, but then they get an upsell for maybe a digital album, or is it kind of the other way around? Oh, well, there's all sorts of things. Like, you know, there's a, if anything, I would say that the most successful users are getting really creative with these tools. Mm. And like by far, t-shirts have always been like the most popular sales item. However, like if you're proposing like unique uh, experiences like you could even add in um, as an upsell for example like some form of like experience or a show ticket or a future you know like digital files like uh, song sheets you could you could add anything into those bundles mm, that's yeah there's probably so many fun creative things that you could do with that. I love it. Um, I also know that you, over the past couple of years, you added the integration of Printful, which makes it really easy to create, create your own merch right there on your site. You want to talk a little bit about that and what musicians have been doing with that? Yeah. The Printful integration has been great because 
If you're a band on tour, one of the most annoying things is having to bring all of the stock with you and truck it around, especially if you're away for long periods of time. Another challenge to having inventory on hand is figuring out sizing mixes for your audience, especially if you're visiting different locations. And, you know, like I don't even as a company, we have a box of like dusty, extra small and triple extra <laughs> large t-shirts in the basement. We want to make sure that those are available for whoever needs them. But, you know, the it's, it's really hard to figure out things like sizing mixes. And then lastly, that comes to your investment. So drop shipping really allows you to try out different offerings without having to have a huge upfront investment. And that's been important for bands too, because you could try out different offerings to like every audience is different, right? Every audience has different preferences. Like it's all about the demographics that you're serving. And, you know, it allows artists to try different things, see what's working with little investment and little buy-in and then if they do discover that there's a specific product or offering that is selling a lot they might want to try to increase their profit margins and then invest in the inventories and they'll have a better understanding of things like sizing mixes so the printful thing it's like there's no reason not to do it because it's free it's free <laughs> you just add it in we don't take a cut of the sales and then you're either going to sell them or you're not and then you can try different products over time yeah, I've had a lot of my artists having fun, like going on there and just creating different things like, you know, creating specific merch for each of their albums and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's really neat. And Printful is always adding different products and they've been a great partner for us, too. That's cool. I also just saw that you guys added gift cards. I'm sh not even sure I knew that. Maybe I saw the email come across a while back and I was like, that was a smart thing to do. But how did that go over like the last holiday season? Gift cards are definitely some, the idea to add gift cards definitely came up uh, around the holidays last year <laughs> because we had like a lot of the stuff that we add is based on member demand. So whenever I'm creating a roadmap, I'm like, what have, what have users been asking for in the last year? And a lot of artists have fans that would like to support them, but you know, maybe they're not offering something right now that they that they'd like to purchase or you know like there might be <laughs> there there might be like a future commitment that they would like to to support so adding gift cards was interesting because you know it's very similar on the back end to something like ticket sales where it's like a unique digital purchase so art definitely over the holidays it's been a, a more a more successful integration but i would say like we have a wide variety of different types of artists that use Benzicle. And we we also have music venues and recording studios and music stores. And those have been really popular with gift cards. Oh, that makes sense too. That's right. It's not all just individual artists. And yeah, you, like you said, record labels, even music stores. Huh? That, that I'm sure they were so excited to get the, the, uh, the gift card option. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And then the bundling too. I think the bundling is so key. I feel like especially nowadays when it's not easy to sell a CD or music in any form, even if it's like a, you know, some people do well selling the USB, um, you know, all their like USB catalog and stuff, but um, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard to get people to buy music. And I feel like bundling is kind of the key. Have you found that amongst the Banzoogle members that bundling has been really popular since you started it? Absolutely. And like bundling, it's, um, it's a really exciting way to move your merchandise. It's, you know, like you can create like some pretty interesting collections of similar items, offer different formats of your music, or even get, uh, you can get more personal, like by uh, selling handcrafted items along with digital mm. items. So it's a good way to introduce your fans to different things that you're offering. And uh, also like it'll allow your fans to consume music in multiple ways too. Like you can pair digital downloads along with like your latest vinyl so they can hear your tracks right away while they're waiting for it. So there's some really interesting things that you could do with bundles. Some of our members are doing experience bundles right now, which I think is so cool because especially after three years of everybody being <laughs> on lockdown, People just want to get out and be around others. And we have this one band, Enter the Haggis, that's been with us for like over a decade. 
And they're always just mo like they're movers and shakers and they're creating these bundle experiences where you could, uh, they're renting out like a full camp, a full campground. And it's like a three day retreat where they're going to play shows like a couple of times every day. And you can rent like a camping spot, show tickets, meals, like all included in these bundles. And people are getting so creative with them. And those are things that like, you know, those are experiences that wouldn't be possible without it, where you could customize the offerings for specific groupings. That is cool. Yeah. I love when artists get really, they get really creative around like the things that make sense with their brand and their audience and the type of people that love their music and just kind of the lifestyle that those people like to live. That makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, I think it, I'm always wondering like how much of this hundred million dollars is like for physical goods versus tickets versus experiences, subscriptions, like all those things. And it might be hard to tell, right? Because if people are doing that kind of bundling where it's like there's some experiences bundled in, they're not really a product, but they kind of are, you know? So do you have any sense for like how much of this is actual physical merch? Yeah, to be honest, the bulk of it represents merch sales. So about 75% of that 100 million. It in, that also, you're right, it includes bundles, some digital merch, and those printful items drop shipping. But it was also it was also the top it was also the top income generator for over 70% of the top 50 sellers in 2022. So not only are we selling like a lot of merch right now, physical or digital, but you know, the artists who are doing well are creating like a pretty diverse offering when it comes to their merch to be able to sell that amount. Mm. So like, so let's say the top 50 sellers, can you give an idea of kind of like the average amount that like, say one of the top 50 sellers is making from their Banzoogle website? We have like, we have artists who are making over $200,000 oh, wow. a year. Yeah. So there's some pretty good success stories at Banzoogle, but even as an artist, if you're earning like you know, we have, we also offer fan subscriptions. So let's say you're only, you're only selling like, like $200 a month. Like that's recurring revenue that you can depend on for various things and you can build on it. So I would say like, if you're not making these products and services and goods available, then you're just leaving money on the table because it's, it's obvious that fans are supporting artists and per making purchases from their website and artists who are you know, trying things out are earning more. But I do know that I was going through some of our sales data before we spoke and it's uh, like artists are selling around for like anywhere between like 40 to $65,000 on average a day at Benzoogle this this week so <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of movement going around in the sales and I think we're already at 102 million dollars in sales since we we put out that press release just recently. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. Some artists may be using Banzoogle sites to sell things like coaching or lessons or, you know, custom songs or things like that, that are a little bit maybe higher priced. Yes. And this is very popular. Uh, we have a lot of music teachers on Banzoogle, mm. um, especially since uh, the pandemic, a lot of uh, artists and teachers had to move their activities online and offer a virtual offering because we integrate things like Crowdcast and YouTube and you could you could embed videos on your Banzoogle site. Uh, we also have password protected pages, which works really well for music students. Mm -hmm. So you you're, uh, you could create like a dedicated page for each of your students and have like their downloadable content and they could either, you know, pay for lessons through your store, uh, like, or they could even um, pay for like a monthly subscription to be able to access this content. So there's a lot of things that you could do if you have different types of music business businesses. And we're seeing a lot of artists, um, you know, diversify their revenue stream. Maybe they weren't even doing uh, virtual lessons before at all, but they're quite successful with this. Yeah. In April, 2020, I did a webinar for Banzoogle about how, like how you can kind of bootstrap getting started with teaching online. And one of the things I said was, Hey, Banzoogle has password protected pages. Like you don't have to go and, you know, invest in something like teachable or thinkific or even my music staff or Musi or anything like that to get started. You can just use your Banzoogle site and have this little like gateway area where you we send your students and you can sell lessons. So I'm glad people are using that. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also another way that they're doing it is through the fan subscriptions. Mm -hmm. Some artists will create fan clubs using tiered subscriptions, but then some music teachers will have like different levels, <laughs> different levels of instruction and how much they provide, uh, how much, how much lesson and service they provide and at what frequency can be set at the different tiers that you have access to if you're subscribing. Interesting. It must be interesting to see like when you create a tool and then like how people get creative with it and people maybe use the things that in a way that you had never even conceived of. It's incredible. And uh, this is not necessarily just music related, but we created like many years ago, we created this thing called the custom style editor because it wasn't possible to generate websites without like a web designer and a code, you know, like without code that were completely unique, like you know, back in the day in Pentacle's <laughs> earlier history. So we developed this thing called the custom style editor, which would essentially let artists build whatever design they want on their site. And this was a little terrifying to us because we said like, they're going to create Franken sites, you know, they're not designers. They're like, you know, they're music, they're art, they're musical artists. So we were pleasantly surprised at the incredible designs that our art, that our, our members were creating from this. There were not too many Franken sites. <laughs> And it really like changed the direction of how flexible we made our sites uh, in the years to come. So that like the use the users and how they adapted our new offerings really influenced how we how we created future tools. Uh, I get it though. I wouldn't be like I wouldn't I'd be worried that someone would create a strange looking site like you said, and then they would tell people it was on Bandzoogle, and they'd be like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, is there anything else that we haven't covered that you want to let people know about Banzoogle and how it can serve them as a musician? Well, I would say like the important thing as an artist is just to get started. So don't let this like full suite of tools that we discussed overwhelm you. Just start with like a single one page site and have an online presence and then start small, whether it's like putting up a t-shirt that you didn't have to purchase inventory for, um, you know, like uploading uh, like your most recent track, put up a poll, get engage your fans and ask them like, which one did you like listening to more? Like, what would you like to see? Which song? would you like to see completed like engage your fans in fun ways and start simple and uh if you're not sure we have a ton of guides on our blog that are free um on how to get started with uh with your online presence yeah and i always encourage artists to like maybe even just start with an electronic press kit and i know banzoogle has some templates for that that i encourage my artists to use um because that's just kind of like here's an overview of who i am here's a few songs here's some quotes here's some press here's you know if you have those things here's some pictures and some videos and you can start with that and then you can build out your site right exactly the like with anything if you have like mental blockers where you're like this is overwhelming the best thing you can do is just take a step forward yeah I mean, let me tell you by working with artists like sometimes the idea of a website is so overwhelming to them and they don't want to put anything out on the internet until it's like all perfect and like their dream site and you know and so i think what she said is so important for all of you guys listening and watching like just get something on the internet so someone can find you and you know there's a place you can send people if you're trying to book yourself or you're trying to you know get press or anything that shows that you're a legitimate artist and that you're not just some Somebody that has a social media presence that doesn't really show who you are and, you know, give a complete picture of who you are as an artist. Exactly. And that's not to say that you shouldn't spend time on like all these social media sites right. and like, you know, hang out, like I like to say, like hang out where your fans are, but then drive them back to a place where you could control the experience and, uh, and, you know, like gather that contact information that you'll own and that you'll be able to leverage in the future. That's right. And a place that you know someone's not going to shut down someday or is not going to have <laughs> like a glitch where it's down for an entire day or whatever that you can't control. Exactly. Yeah. Benzoogle has 99.98% uptime annually. So wow, it's not very common. <laughs> That is pretty impressive. Well, thank you so much. This has been so informative. I'm glad that we got you back on after two years because so much has already changed in what Banzoogle offers and, and gotten even better and just more tools for musicians. So thank you for all of your service to musicians over all these years and the company's service. And I have continued to just really love to be a partner. And I, I don't even, I haven't counted how many people I've sent to Banzoogle, but it's gotta be hundreds by now. I've mean, that have officially joined
joined and you know there's plenty of other people that have heard about it from me but um i'm i'm just happy to continue to promote banzookal in the future thank you so much brian it was lovely speaking with you as always you too thanks for listening to the profitable musician show i would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.